it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Today is the SU Home Decor Blog Hop. So welcome if you have been hopping along. And if you haven't, if you've joined straight to my website, then do please have a look at all the other projects as well on the Blog Hop. Um, so I have got a topiary for you. I haven't finished it yet. I've done a lot of work on it because it took a while a bit longer than I thought it might um, but I thought I would show you how I made it I started with a polystyrene ball so simple polystyrene ball got these from a local discount shop um, and it's ended up looking like this I have used the daisy punch from the retiring annual catalogue so this is in the 2018-2019 catalogue it will be in the 1920 catalogue as well and I'm using the Tea Room Specialty Designer whoops sorry about that Tea Room Specialty Designer series paper and I've just punched out loads of um, daisies and you end up with a pile of these and then I've curled the edges so I'll just show you how I've done that so I've done these are the same paper but I've just alternated the sides very carefully hold the petal firmly so that it's away from the joint and then curl. If you don't hold it firmly, you may end up um, doing, you know that thing, he loves me, he loves me not. Um, you may end up with your daisies looking a bit like that. So do be firm. Oops, folded that rather than curling it. There we are. So it's just basic curling um, like that. And then grab yourself some multi-purpose liquid adhesive, preferably one that's actually got some glue at the tip. And just offsetting them, just pop those together, hold them in place. And then once they're kind of reasonably together, I've just made a circle of my fingers, uh, or finger and thumb, and then pinch them together, and you end up with these cute little things, like that. Now, you do need to make sure that these are fully dry before you then do much with them, but I just did lots of these and left them to dry, and then, as I say, just pinch them so that they're... You want this still flat, but you want everything else in that sort of tulip shape. And then just start sticking them on. Now, my version of this has got seams. So I started this. There's a seam going all the way round. I started just by following that round and then I fill, filled the rest. But I left the very bottom empty. So we've got our last one here. And that has got, I've got one ready to go in there. And that is going to then have a stick put through it. So... Let's start by sticking that on. Got a gummy, gummy nozzle, which is never a good idea. Here we go. So we'll start by sticking this on. So you want a reasonable amount of glue, particularly probably for this last one. So, and I've just used a single hole punch. It's just a quarter inch, probably. I mean, it's a standard uh, stationer's hole punch just a single one and then pop that in there hold it in place I mean don't push too hard because you don't want to squash the other side but just hold that in place and I'll pop the pop the lid back on there just keep holding that in place and then I've got a garden stick which has got a point um, and I've covered it because I'm using this paper uh, this is on a vanilla base and it's got calypso coral so I've got the ombre calypso coral ombre ribbon um, and then I've just wound it round the stick. I started with some tear and tape on the ribbon at the top just so that that was secure and every now and again I've put um, ah, glue dots and then once that is stuck you just want to push your stick into your polystyrene so that you end up with your topiary. And then, just as a last sort of finishing touch, 
you can, you know, I always have to do these upside down. There's just something about me and tying ribbons. So, just as a finishing touch, let us, and I want quite long ends, I think, because I think it looks quite pretty to have long ends on your bows when you're doing these sorts of things. And then, oh, now I've done it the wrong way up. Okay, let's, let us cut the, cut the piece of ribbon and try that again. I seem to be going through a phase where I can't tie a ribbon properly. And I don't know why. Because um, I want the, I want the ends to be hanging down. So, okay, let's try this again. Get to the ends. Vaguely even. This makes good television, doesn't it? Isn't it nice to know that I'm not the only person that's bad at ribbons? So I don't think I am. Right, that's better. I wanted it so that this this one was on top, so that I could then go over, because that way I end up with the ends hanging down. Now, if you're clever, you can twist your ribbon as you're tying the bow, so that you end up with vanilla at the top on both sides, or not. Uh, or or, or the Calypso Coral at the top on both sides, but so that it's the same on both sides is really what we're looking for. There we go. And then just trim your ends at a nice angle. And there you go. So you've got your lovely topiary ball. And you can pop that in a pot. You'll need quite a heavy base. Um, so you could use um, a flower pot with some stones at the bottom and then some uh, florist foam and stick your stick your stick in. But you do want something that has got a reasonable weight at the bottom because most of the weight of this is at the top because we've covered it with paper. So your center of gravity with it as it is is very high and you need to you need to put some of the weight at the bottom. So solid weight at the bottom. Um, floristry foam on top and then stick your stick in or you could just use sand in your pot if you haven't got a hole in the bottom seal the bottom of your um, flower pot sand and then stick your stick in but there you are simple easy time consuming yes but um, I'll get some photographs taken of it um, so yes there we go I hope you enjoyed that if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you don't already have a demonstrator in the UK and you would like to purchase any of these items, do remember that the annual catalogue is about to retire. So if you're looking at buying any bundles out of the current annual catalogue, if you get them now, you will save 10%, which is always a plus, gives you more to spend on the new catalogue. If you've got a long shopping list, if you wait until the beginning of May, you can then also add items from the new annual catalogue, and you'll need to contact me to, to, for me to explain how that works. But you can then add items from the new annual catalogue to your starter kit, join my team, get 20% net discount on all your purchases from now until you decide you no longer wish to be a stamping up demonstrator. How great is that? You don't have to sell, you don't have to run workshops, you can just buy for you and keep that demo, that discount for yourself. But obviously if you do run workshops or um, have friends who want to buy things from you, then that helps subsidise your hobby, which is always a plus. Anyway, thank you very much indeed for watching. If you've enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, some close-up photographs, what I've used, that sort of stuff, it, there's a link to the associated blog post in the description bar below. If you pop over there, you'll also see the list of people taking part in this blog, uh, in this hop rather, in this blog hop. Um, and it would be great if you could go and visit their projects as well. I'm sure they're going to have some amazing things to share. So, yes, thank you very much indeed. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon.